Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Appy Loves One from the Code Chef November 2018 long challenge. The problem states Chef has a sequence A1 to AN. Each element of this sequence is either 0 or 1. Appy gives him a string S with length Q describing a sequence of queries. There are two types of queries. The first one is an exclamation mark, which means we need to right shift the sequence A, i.e. replace A by another sequence B1 to BN, satisfying that BI plus 1 equals AI for each valid I and B1 equals AN. This is a very verbose way of saying that we just take the element at the end end of our array A and put it at the front. Uh, the second query is a question mark, which is asking us to find the length of the longest contiguous subsequence of A with length less than or equal to K, such that each element of this subsequence is equal to 1. And the question is asking us to answer all the queries of the second type. And the constraints for this problem are that k is going to be less than n, which is going to be less than 10 to the 5, n being the number of elements in our array, and k being this value here. Uh, the number of queries, q, is going to be less than 3 times 10 to the 5th, and the uh, values of our elements are only either going to be 0 or 1. And the string s will only contain exclamation marks and question marks. So let's take a look at an example, the example that Code Chef provided us with. So here is the input and the output. So the first three numbers are n, q, and k. So n is the number of elements in our array, q is the number of queries or characters in our string, and k is basically what we're going to cap uh, the length of the sequence that we're looking for. And uh, on the, set, the next two lines is our array of values and our string of queries. So uh, what we're going to do is walk through this very quickly to see how we get 2, 3, and 3. So if we start with our array here, um, the first query that we get is a question mark. So it basically is just asking us, what's the longest sequence of ones in our array currently? And clearly we can see that it's 2, so we're going to output 2. The next query we, get, query we get is an exclamation mark, which means we need to put the element at the end of the array at the beginning. So when we do that, uh, the array then looks like this. The next query we get is a question mark. Um, so at this point, we need to find what the longest sequence of ones is. We can clearly see it's three, so we output three. Then we get another uh, exclamation mark, which means perform this rotate again, put the uh, value at the end of the beginning, which gives us this. And then we have a final question mark, um, which means we need to find the longest sequence. Uh, but note that the question stated it's the longest sequence that's less than or equal to k. So even though the longest sequence here is 4, we're going to uh, cap that at uh, 3. So uh, that's basically what this question is asking us to do. Uh, so how do we go about solving it? So the first thing that is important to understand in solving this problem is the constraints. So if we look at them again, uh, the most important ones here are n and q. So n can be up to 10 to the 5th, and q can be up to 3 times 10 to the 5th. And as I've mentioned in many videos before, typically the rule of thumb is that we have up to 10 to the 8 operations uh, for our time limit, before we exceed our time limit. And we know that we need to process at least three times 10 to the fifth queries, which means that the time complexity for each of our queries individually, at worst case, can be log n. Because if it's linear, uh, for the number of elements that we have in our array, 10 times 10 to the fifth, that is going to give us three times 10 to the tenth, which is more than 10 to the eighth. Uh, so, for both of our operations, our rotate and for our uh, lookup of what's the max uh, sequence of ones, those either need to be constant or log n. So if we approach these one by one, um, with that in mind, we can try and figure out how we're going to solve this. So for the first one, for rotating, it's pretty easily to do this. It's pretty easy to do this in constant time if we use a linked list because uh, for a rotate on a linked list, we're basically just doing a deletion of the element at the end and an insertion at the beginning. Um, so for a vector, this in, in C++, this would be linear for inserting at the end and constant at the end. But for a linked list, we can do both operations in constant time. So that takes care of that. So then how do we do our lookup of the maximum sequence of ones uh, 
in at worst log n time. So, you know, naively the way to do it is just to loop through and to keep track, but that's going to take linear time. Um, and then if we try and store, so if we start off by storing all of these sequence lengths in, so, in some sort of data structure like a set or a priority queue, that gives us the ability to look up what the maximum set length is or sequence length is in log n time. Um, but then the problem is updating that uh, sequence length. So every time we do a rotate, we would need to um, decrease one of the sequence lengths and increase one of the sequence lengths, potentially. So for instance, when we have our sequence lengths two and two here, and then we do a rotate, we'd need to decrease one of the sequence lengths from two to one and then increase the other one from three to one. Um, and if we're only doing a deletion at the back and an insertion in the front, um, there's no way to actually know without looping through till we hit a zero um, to know w what's the length, what's the sequence length that we need to decrease and increase by one. Um, but the way that I figured out to get around this is to basically not store the full, um, you know, array or the full all of the values in the links list, um, but to store sort of like a densified. Uh, linked list. So what ends up happening is I, I wrote a data structure that looks like the following. So we've we've got I'm calling this a dense ring and inside it it has a multiset for keeping track of the uh, sequence lengths and then all we need to do is look at the largest element in this multiset and because uh, in C++ the multiset is a sorted data structure this can be done in constant time. Um, and then we have this sort of dense linked list. So what this is going to be is it's going to um, store pairs of values. So the, the second value in our pair is going to be whether it's uh, 0 or 1, a sequence of 0 or 1s. And then the first value in our pair is going to be the length of that uh, sequence. And what that gives us the ability to do is when we're uh, deleting or and inserting um, to the end and beginning of our list, we know the current um, size of that sequence. So that means that we'll be able to update our multiset um, by doing insertions and deletions. That will take log n time, but discovering the length of our current sequence that we're modifying uh, will be constant time. Um, so that solves this problem. So we'll take a look at um, this, this class in more detail at the end. But first, let's go back and uh, sort of walk through an example uh, that we had. So we started off with 11011. So the first operation here um, is to query and figure out what the length of the sequence is. But we're not actually going to be doing it on this um, Data, set, data structure here. We're going to be doing it on our sort of dense list. So the list within our dense ring is going to look like this. It's going to have uh, 2, 1, 2, and to represent sort of the second value in our pairs here, I just color coded these. So blue corresponds to a sequence of ones and red corresponds to a sequence of zeros. And it's just storing the length of that sequence here. Uh, which is sort of why I'm calling this a dense ring. The ring because you can rotate and sort of move the last element to the beginning, and the dense because we're not actually storing this all as ones and zeros, we're now storing it as the length of the sequences. And then the multiset here is just going to contain the blue values. Um, so currently it's got two sequences, of both of them have the same uh, length of two. And so when we get our question mark, we basically just look at the largest element here and then output two. Uh, the next query is an exclamation mark, which means we do a rotate. So it means we're going to take this one here, put it at the beginning, and for our, our dense ring, that's going to involve decrementing the last one because uh, it doesn't have a value of 1, and then incrementing the first element. Uh, so this is going to become 3, 1, and then we also need to update uh, the sequence lengths in our multiset. So the 2 at the back here became 1, so we're going to delete the 2, insert the 1, and then the 2 at the beginning became 3, so we're going to delete the 2 and insert a 3. So both of these take log n, and uh, the increment and decrement obviously is just constant. So the next time we get a, X or a question mark, we're going to look at the back here and output a 3. 
And then our second last query is another exclamation mark, which means we're gonna rotate again. So this one's gonna come to the front. The one's gonna disappear. So we're gonna pop or delete uh, this element from our linked list and then increment our element here to four. And then once again, update our multiset, which will look like this. So we have one, 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 four, one in our dense ring, and then uh, four in our multiset. And so the output for this is going to look like two, three, and three. And note that because k is three, even when we do our query here uh, to get the maximum sequence of ones, we're just going to are going to cap this at three. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. And uh, if it doesn't, um, hopefully look taking a closer look at the code here um, will help you understand. So let's take a look at that. So here is our C++ solution. Just at the top here, we're reading in our inputs. So n, q, and k, uh, we're reading those in. Then we're declaring a vector of integers, and we're just going to read those all in. That's dimension by m. And then we're reading in our string s here all at once. We don't really need the k to read in the q different characters. We can just read this all in as a string. And we have a corner case here that we're dealing with, and that's if we have absolutely uh, no ones in our sequence. And if that's the case, whenever we get a question mark, we just need to output zero. And for the exclamation marks, we don't need to do anything. Once we take care of that corner case, we can come to the bulk of the cases now. So we declare or construct a dense ring here by passing the vector to it. We'll take a look how we do that um, afterwards. And uh, then we have a for loop. So for each character in our string s, if it's a question mark, we just need to output the minimum of k and the current max sequence of ones, um, which we can get because that's a public method in our data structure dense ring. Otherwise, we just perform a rotate. And uh, that's our whole solution. So let's take a look at the details of our uh, class dense ring here. So we already took a look at sort of what is the interface of this. So first, let's take a look at uh, the four helper private functions, and then we'll take a look at the three um, public functions, the constructor, and then the rotate, and the max sequence of one. So our helper functions here are pretty straightforward. We have a pop or decrement back and a push or increment front. And that's because um, whenever we're deleting from the back uh, or sort of you know moving one element from the back to the front, if the sequence length is greater than one, we just need to do a decrement. But if it's equal to one, that means we want to delete it. Um, and sort of it's similarly at the front, um, we need to pass what the current value, whether it's a zero or a one, and if it matches, we just want to increment the first element. But if it uh, doesn't match, that means we need to push into the front or insert into the front um, a new sequence of length one. So that's what init size is, and have uh, with the corresponding value. Um, and then the decrease sequence and increase sequence, um, these are helper functions sort of for our multiset. So the first two helper functions are modifying our uh, list of pairs, and the second two are modifying our multiset of sequence lengths. So when we're decreasing, basically we're just deleting one with size SZ and then um, inserting one with size SZ minus one. And for the increase, it's the same idea, but instead of uh, inserting size plus or inserting size minus one, we're inserting size my, uh, plus one. And then taking a look at the constructor and then the two public methods, uh, the constructor is pretty straightforward. We just take our vector and um, we are going to create our list from that vector. So basically, we're initializing it to have a, a sequence length of one for our first element with the value uh, either zero or one, depending on what's at the beginning of our vector. And then we loop through. And while the uh, values in our vector are sort of the same, we're going to be incrementing our sequence length. But whenever it changes, uh, we need to then uh, create a new sequence length with a different value. Um, and in order to initialize our multiset, we basically just want to insert all of the sequence lengths um, for the ones. So when it's uh, a zero, we don't want to insert it into our multiset. And then our two public methods, we'll cover the max sequence of ones because it's the easier one first. We just want to basically return the last element in our multiset, which we can get by dereferencing and using the pre increment on the uh, end method of our multiset. And that will return us, because it's a sorted data structure uh, from smallest to largest, it'll return us the largest value. And then last but not least, we have our rotate method. So there's two different things we need to do. We need to update the multiset if we are popping or, or modifying a one. 
and uh, then we need to update our list for both ones and zeros. Um, and obviously we only need to modify the multiset for ones because we're only storing a uh, sequence length of ones in our multiset. So uh, first we check is the last uh, pair in our list for a one. If so, we need to decrease our sequence um, with this value, and then we need to increase our sequence with uh, this value. So what this means is that we need to decrease the sequence length uh, at the end of the array, and then we need to increase the sequence length at the beginning of the array. And note here that if at the beginning of the array we have a sequence corresponding to a, uh, a zero and not a one, we're just going to be adding a new sequence length of one. Um, and then once we finish this, we can move on and basically just uh, pop or decrement the back or push or increment the front. Note that you need to do the push or increment the front first because if we uh, pop off the back um, or modify the back value, that, that's going to affect the push or increment the front. So that is the entire code. And the last thing to do is talk about the time complexity, which for this problem is going to be big O of Q times log N because we have Q queries and uh, the max sequence of ones which corresponds to our question mark is constant time and our rotate is going to be log n time due to the insertions into our multiset. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.